This video will show you how to do an X bar and an R chart. Um, we have data from uh, 6.7, uh, the supplement to chapter 6, so uh, the supplemental chapter uh, after chapter 6. Uh, what we have here is data from uh, uh, Auto Piston Factory. And what they did is they uh, they uh, took a sample of their pistons um, each day for five days. And the sample um, is an important one to remember uh, that the N in this case is, is 10, uh, not 5. They did five samples, but every time they did a sample, so on day one, they actually randomly pulled 10 pistons. And they've already done some of the work for you in that they averaged those 10 pistons uh, their size of those pistons. And so this was the average uh, size of those 10 pistons on day one. And then on day two, they took another sample uh, and uh, averaged those 10 pistons uh, to give us this. They also calculated the range for us. And so remember that the range um, is the, the largest uh, subtracting the smallest. So we want to know how much uh, the sizes vary. And the way you calculate that is you take the largest uh, size piston in this case and you subtract the smallest size piston. So for these 10 pistons that were randomly pulled on day one, they identified the largest one and subtracted to that smallest one. And so uh, the range of that sample was 4.2 millimeters. And once again, the average of those 10 pistons for day one was 156.9 millimeters. And so they did that uh, for five days. So on day two, they pulled another 10 pistons. They averaged them together to give us uh, this average. And they figured out the range, the largest piston subtracting the smallest piston. Um, in order to do these, uh, these charts, the X bar and the R chart, we need to calculate uh, the average of these averages and the average for the ranges. And so in Excel, you can bring up the function average, and we would highlight this. And so this is what they show in regards to uh, the formulas in your textbooks, the X bar bar, uh, because this is technically X bar. It is the average uh, for those 10 pistons. This is the X bar bar. Uh, the average of the averages. Now R, uh, this is just R. It's the range for those particular 10 pistons and then on day two, those 10 pistons. And so this is where we get R bar, the average of the ranges. And so once again, we would calculate it the same way that we did uh, the average of the averages. But in this case, we're going to use the ranges. And so now we can go ahead and calculate uh, and create uh, the X bar and the R chart. And so what we have here is uh, data. Um, we don't know in this case. Um, there are two ways to do an X bar chart. One way is to, uh, if we know the sample uh, or the uh, population standard deviation, uh, how much uh, the sigma, how much it deviates, uh, we could use that. Uh, but in this case, we don't know that because they haven't told us. Uh, they don't know uh, what is the, the typical deviation uh, for pistons. And so we don't know what the population is. And so we have to rely on, on uh, the table uh, based on what we know about normal distribution. This table uh, is on page 227 of your textbook, and it is the factors for computing uh, control chart limits for three sigma. Um, there are other tables. Um, if you want to do a two sigma or a four sigma or a five sigma, uh, there are other tables, but um, we're only going to use the, the three sigma table in this case. So if they don't give you the population uh, standard deviation or the sigma, then uh, you simply by default will be using a three sigma model. And so we need to look up three important factors on there. Um, the first one, the A2, is what's called the mean factor. And that's what we use to uh, calculate the, uh, the X bar chart, uh, the upper control limit and the lower control limit. And then 
This is the upper range or the D4 and the lower range, the D3, uh, which we'll use to later create uh, the R chart uh, for this particular uh, uh, data. Uh, and these are found simply by looking at the sample size. Once again, it's not five. Uh, that's the number of samples. But every time we do a sample, we do 10. And so we would look under the sample size of n equals to 10. You'll see that the table only goes to 12. Um, uh, there are uh, other tables out there uh, that will go well beyond the 12. Uh, but in our case, all of our homework and on the exam uh, our sample sizes will be anywhere from 2 to 12 and so they just give you that much uh, data so but we're at 10 and so I look under mean factor there and this is where I get the 0 0.308 uh, the upper range the D4 is 1.77 and the uh, the lower range is the 0.223 so let's uh, first of all do uh, our uh, our X bar chart. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, calculate over here. So we got our, um, this is really x bar bar, uh, but we we tend to simplify it and we talk about the upper control limit for an x bar uh, chart. So um, I'm going to just simply pull the, uh, the x bar bar over here so we have it. And that is the x bar or the x bar bar uh, technically, and we're going to calculate the upper uh, control limit for the the x bar, and we're going to do the lower control limit uh, for the x bar. And this is where we examine to determine whether the the mean is uh, staying uh, close to uh, where we want it. It's not deviating too far above or below uh, our x bar bar here. Uh, remember that with this type of data, which is continuous data because it's uh, a measurement of, of size uh, of that uh, in millimeters, it's continuous data, and so you always have to do an X bar and an R chart to determine once that uh, the mean is staying within control, but also the range is not, uh, the distribution's not changing dramatically. So the way you do this is you simply uh, use as your starting point uh, the uh, the x bar or x bar bar and we're going to add to it uh, we determined uh, based on the factors of, of a three sigma uh, we have this mean factor 0 0.308 uh, we're going to multiply that uh, times the average range the average range is going to be our substitute uh, for not knowing so a combination of the average range and this a2 or this mean factor from the table we'll substitute in uh, for uh, what we know about normal distributions and not knowing the population uh, standard deviation. And so we're going to add that and that'll be our upper control limit. And the lower control limit is basically the opposite. We're going to take the, the mean here and we're going to subtract then um, this mean factor times the average range. And there you have it. So we have uh, the upper control limit is 156.53.54 uh, millimeters, and the lower uh, control range is 153.7. So as long as the mean stays within those those two uh, control limits, we would consider this process in control. And now we can go back and, and double check. In fact, we can look at the numbers real quickly. Uh, it looks like uh, this first one here is uh, out of control because it's above our upper control limit uh, and this one is also out of control so it looks like we have some problems here now in the second video I'll come back and show you how we can look at this graphically but you could actually check the numbers we only have five numbers here and you can see if they fall in the range and if any of these are out of control uh, it looks like uh, some of them are uh, let's do the R chart uh, so the R chart uh, in this case uh, because we have to look at the distribution is actually pretty simple to do uh, all we do for that one is uh, so once again we have uh, as kind of our starting point the average uh, uh, R here so we'll just move it over there and now we're going to do the upper control limit uh, for the uh, R and the uh, lower control limit 
I guess we'll refer to them like they do. Um, it's just an R chart, and this is the upper control limit for just an R chart. And all you do in this case is you simply take uh, the, uh, the, the mean factor here, so the upper uh, range, uh, this one from the table that we looked up using a sample size of 10, uh, it's that times the, uh, the range, the average range, and then this one, the lower one, is calculated by simply taking uh, this uh, the lower range, the D3, and multiplying it by the, uh, the average range. You'll see, if you go back to the table on 227, um, as uh, the samples get smaller, you'll see that uh, the lower range ends up uh, zeroing out uh, just so that you're aware of that. Uh, so uh, below a sample size of uh, seven, you'll see the lower ranges are zeros. And so that would, uh, the, the lower range would just become a, a zero. So now we have the upper control limit and the lower control limit. We will look at this. And so for the most part, uh, it looks like in regards to the ranges, uh, we are doing well. Uh, so our, our uh, control chart for, for the ranges or uh, checking the ranges. We Our distribution is in control, but uh, as we pointed out, it appears that we have some problems with uh, uh, our, uh, our average in regards to uh, uh, our mean. It seems to be deviating a little too much. In the second video, I'll show you how you take this data and create a, a simple visual chart uh, in Excel uh, that is easy to do. Uh, but that should be it for the X bar and R chart and how you calculate those.